guys, let's take a look at the next problem we have on deck. And it says, for the implicitly defined function x cubed ln of e plus t squared, all equal to t cubed x minus 3t plus 1, evaluate x prime of t and use it to find the equation of the tangent line where t is equal to 0. So this is a pretty challenging problem of this type. If you've taken a look at previous midterms and finals, you will realize that this is up there. It's like an 8 on 10 problem. And let's take a look at how we can go about simplifying this. The very first thing that may bother some of you guys over here is that instead of having x and y, we have x's and t's. If this bothers you, there's nothing stopping you from making a change of variables over here, making it look like something you are more comfortable with, solving that, and then going back and replacing your value. If you choose to take that method, you have to realize over here that everywhere you see x, it's actually equivalent to a y value. x over here is the dependent val uh, value over here, and you can see that because it's x prime of t that you want. t is the independent variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to rewrite the equation that we have using variables that we're more comfortable with. In this case, every x is going to become a y, and everywhere I see a t, that's going to be our x value. Now these equations are exactly the same. All I have done is a quick change of variables. I let every x become a y. I let every t become x. And then we can, you know, at the very end, change them back. So now we need to take the derivative of this guy. And what is different between this problem and every other derivative uh, that we've seen thus far is that we don't have y isolated. Every other derivative we took was always y equals something, y equals something, y equals something. But here we have our y's embedded in the equation itself. This is what makes it implicit. And so we have to learn how to solve this type of a problem. And the way to do this is very simple. You derive like you would normally derive, except there's one new rule. If you derive a term that contains a y, you just simply slap on a y prime. That is it. So for instance, if I had x squared, the derivative would become 2x. Similarly, y squared would also become 2y, except if you're differentiating a y, just simply slap on a y prime and that'll get the job done. So let's apply this over here. If we were to take this derivative, we gotta be careful about the first couple of terms because here we see things that are being multiplied. And when things are multiplied, we have to understand that it is the product rule that we need to apply. So if we're going to apply the product rule over here, it's probably a good idea to start off by computing our ingredients separately perhaps. So if I call this first term u, and I call this second term v, and take their derivatives individually, so u prime is going to become 3y squared. Now notice you just did a term that contains a y, so don't forget to slap on that y prime. Similarly, v prime, ln of something, becomes 1 over something. But then due to the chain rule, you also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is 2x. You have to repeat this process. We need ingredients for these guys as well. So we have a new set of u's and v's. Here u would be this, and u prime would be 3x squared, and v would be y. Now v prime, normally the derivative of x is 1. Similarly, the derivative of y is 1. But we did y, so it's going to become 1 y prime or just y prime. Now that we have all of these ingredients, we are in a position to take the derivative of that line. So we're going to apply this product rule. Remember, u prime v plus u v prime, u prime v. So this is, this is going to give us 3y squared. Don't forget that y prime times v. So ln of e plus x squared 
u prime v plus u v prime. Now we can simplify this by putting everything on the numerator. So plus 2xy cubed divided by e plus x squared. And so that's going to be the answer to the left-hand side. And now we apply a second product rule on the right-hand side. So once again, u prime v gives us 3x squared y plus u v prime, which is going to give us plus x cubed y prime. Continuing on, the derivative of negative 3x is simply negative 3, and the derivative of a constant is 0. And this is the hard part of this problem. If we can get till here, the next few steps are fairly mechanical. The next step over here is to bring all the y primes to one side and everything else to the other. Then we're going to factor out the y prime and divide to get our final answer. So those steps are always going to be the same. All the y primes to one side, factor out the y prime, divide, and you got your answer. So let's do that. First things first, if there's a term that contains a y prime, I'm going to leave it on the, or I'm going to bring it to the left side. So now I have 3y squared, I'm going to leave the y prime towards the end here, ln of e plus x squared. Let's write the y prime in now. I'm going to take this term and I'm going to bring it over, so it's going to become negative x cubed y prime. And then everything else is going to move to the right-hand side. So currently on the right-hand side, I have 3x squared y minus 3. And I'm going to take this term and also bring it to the right side. And it's going to give me 2xy cubed all over e plus x squared. Our next step is to factor out the y prime. So let's factor the y prime out. If we factor the y prime out, we're simply left with 3y squared ln of e plus x squared minus x cubed. And on the right hand side, everything remains intact. So 3x squared y minus 3 minus 2xy cubed all over e plus x squared. And now you're essentially done. You simply take this piece, put it down here, and that'll be your answer. So let's do that and write down our final answer for y prime. So it's going to be 3x squared y minus 3 minus 2xy cubed all over e plus x squared. And then this piece was going to become the denominator. Essentially, you're isolating y prime. So 3y squared ln e of e plus x squared minus x cubed. And there you have it, guys. This is y prime. This being said, since we changed our variables here right at the beginning, it might be a good idea to revert back to those. And so let's do that. Um, where are we going to do this? Let's do it right here. So remember, every um, y was, was initially an x. So anywhere, so it's x prime that we're finding here. So anywhere you see a y, you're going to write x, and any x is going to become a t. So every x is, all of your x's are going to become t's, and all of your y's, x's. This is what our final answer is going to look like. What did our x's become again? T's. And there you go. We can circle this answer. This is the derivative of that function right there. The second part of this question is asking us to find the equation of a tangent line. So let's take a look at how we're going to go about getting that done. Finding the equation of a tangent line, guys, should bring a smile to your face because it is a super simple and straightforward process. Okay, it is three steps. And as long as you can apply these three steps, you're going to be okay. In order to do that, let's first um, get ourselves some room over here. What I am going to do is I'm gonna save this derivative. Let's save that up there. So in order to find the equation of a tangent line, here are the steps you need to know. It is like finding the equation of any other line. We only need 
two ingredients. We need a point, we need a slope, and then we plug it into our equation for the line. Now, a lot of you guys are used to using y equals mx plus b as your equation for the line, and if you have a point and a slope, you can go ahead and do that. But I'd like to show you another way, which you may or may not have seen before, to find that equation. But here are our steps at the end of the day. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our point. Now, the way to do that is you just simply take the x value given to you and plug it into the function. Find the y value. To find the slope, you're going to take x and you're going to plug it into the derivative, which is why I saved it. And lastly, to find the equation of a line, you can either use y equals mx plus b if you're comfortable with it, or you can use this formula that I'm introducing to you. And this formula simply involves plugging in your value for m from here and your x and y, which you find in step one. And then you can circle your answer. It's a little bit easier. Hopefully, you will agree. So first things first, we need to figure out what our point is. So that involves going right back up over here and taking our x value or our t value and plugging it into this equation. Now, since we're going to need this equation, let's go grab that as well first and bring it down instead of having to go up and down numerous times. So we have this equation. Let's put that right down there. So we have what we need. That's our equation, and that there is our slope. We're going to start applying this process. So first of all, take x and plug it into f of x, or in our case, we remember t was equal to 0. I'm just going to plug that in everywhere. I see t here in an effort to solve for x. So if I take 0 and I plug it in everywhere, here is what I end up with. I get x cubed ln of e, because that's 0, is equal to, that's gone, that's gone, 1. It turns out that ln of e is also equal to 1, so you're left with x cubed equals 1. Taking the cube root of both sides is going to give you x equals to 1. It turns out that our point is 0, comma, 1. The second step is to find the slope, m. And in order to do that, we're going to take these points here, the points we just got here, 0 and 1, and we're going to plug them in here. So every t is going to be 0, every x is going to be 1. Plug those values in here, and that's going to be your slope, your m value. So if we do this, this first term is gone because t is 0. Minus 3. Once again, since t is 0 here, this term becomes 0. All over. I'm going to plug in 1 there, so that's going to be 3 ln e minus 0. Remembering that ln of e is 1, you are now left with negative 3 over 3, and you're going to quickly discover that m is equal to 1. Really not that bad. Last thing to do is take these values and simply plug it into the equation that I have set up for you there. Obviously, you'll have to memorize this equation if you choose to use it. y is equal to m, which for us is 1 x minus x1, now x for us is t, remember that, so 0, plus y1, which is 1. You can leave your answer like that, or if you wish to write it in the y equals mx plus b form, just simply open this up, and you're done. Oh, I made a mistake over here, give me a second, m is not really 1, m is negative 1. So let's correct to that. And that's more like it. This is our final answer to this problem. So really not very challenging. And this method of finding the equation of a tangent line does not necessarily apply just to implicitly differentiated functions or defined functions. It applies to any function. So anytime they ask you to find the equation of a tangent line, guys, you can always use these three steps. It is that simple. Hopefully that was helpful. Let's take a look at our next example.